Hi and welcome to another Reaper tutorial. Today we're going to talk about setting up Superior Drummer in Reaper and um, making a basic drum beat. So the first thing you may want to do when following this tutorial is go to Options, Themes and press Default 3.0. That's because I'm using this uh, older kind of uh, theme for Reaper because I think it, it's a lot easier to use and it looks cleaner. Anyways, let's uh, create our track. Just double click here. Then we have our track. Let's put input to MIDI. Doesn't matter which channel, as long as it's just MIDI. And now we're just gonna hit record. Uh, might be an idea to arm the track first. Let's try again. What's happening now is that we're recording an empty MIDI event. Just stop the recording. Make it four beats long. Now we have our empty MIDI file. Now what we're going to do is perhaps call this track to rooms, just to make it easier to uh, recognize later in the project when you have lots of tracks. We're going to press the uh, FX button. In the filter list, we're going to make sure that all plugins is selected. I'm just going to write superior, and here we have superior drummer. Double click, which brings up our nice little interface here. You can see that it's loading the sound files. You can try pushing some of the drums. sounds okay. Now what you're gonna want to do is set up some multi-track possibilities for this because uh, one thing is using the mixer which is okay but I don't really like to use it that much so we're gonna create several tracks for each drum in Reaper. So we're gonna exit this, make sure Superior Drummer is selected, go to Options and we're going to press build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects. It's going to ask if that's okay and you're going to press yes and now we just got loads of tracks down here. Then we're going to press show user interface or UI again. We're going to go to mixer and on output we're going to right click and press multi-channel. This automatically routes our drums out to specific channels. So now that we have our drums routed out, we can exit this, double click on our empty MIDI event, which brings up the piano roll. Now this might be really confusing to those of you who haven't used this before, but I promise you it gets really easy once you get the hang of it. So we're just going to create some uh, bass drum kicks. Now our bass drum can be found at C2. So let's just, and it's also right below C2. It's the exact same sound. And we're just going to create four bass drum clicks, simply by double clicking wherever we want to make the, uh, the hit. And it doesn't matter how long this one is, because it's just a drum, it's not a consistent sound. And um, we're also <coughs> going to um, create some hi-hats, which is on C4, that is the open hi-hat. Oops. And we also have the snare, which is a couple of notches above the kick drum. Let's create the snare at the third beat, one, two, three, yes. Now let's here are the sounds. Just uh, make sure the marker is here and press space. Sounds okay, but we can also spice it up a little bit, move around the kicks, perhaps do like this. Let's listen to this. Not bad. Let's say that I want to remove this one. 
Now I can either double click it to remove it or I can hold ALT which gives us the eraser and just erase through it. Now listen again. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I want this bit to continue. I'm gonna exit the MIDI editor. Make sure this clip is selected. And also make sure that it is actually 4 bits. This is not going to work if it's slightly more or slightly less. And then pretty simply hit Ctrl D, which is for duplicate. Three times. Now we have four. And we can always select all of these. Press this one, hold shift, press this one. And we can duplicate this three more times. And now we have a beat that's running for quite a while. And now if you want to make all this into one single MIDI event, just select all of them, hold shift, right click, and glue items. This is going to make it all into one MIDI event. And this is uh, practical for uh, editing things. If I double click on it now, you can see that I have all my MIDI drums here. Alright, so let's say we're happy with our beat. Now let's take a quick overlook at the mixing possibilities here. If I uh, solo this track, which, which is called S21, you can hear that this is only the kick drum. We can always double click here where it says S21 and rename that one kick. Well, let's listen to the next one. This is the snare drum. It's the top microphone on the snare. Let's call that snare top. And the next one. This is the bottom microphone on the snare wires. So we can call that snare bottom. And if you listen closely to this one, once more, you can hear that the kick drum is actually bleeding in through the, the uh, snare bottom microphone. This is something that you might want to hear or might not want to hear. If you want to get rid of that bleeding, just go into the FX button on the superior drummer. Now we're all already in the uh, mixer. And we're simply going to find this microphone which we used, which is this SDB snare bottom. Go to edit, and here this is the uh, bleed control. You can see that now the kick drum is bleeding into this, and also all the toms. If we remove this, then there should be no more bleeding. That's here. Solo the snare bottom microphone. Success. And the next one. This is the uh, hi hat microphone. And the next one. This is probably the toms, but we haven't added, added any toms yet, so we can hear anything. Next one. This is the overhead microphone. Now you might be slightly confused because this also sounds like a hi hat microphone. Well, the overhead microphone records everything at the moment. All the cymbals, toms, kick, snare, and so on. And um, what I like to do sometimes is actually just mute the hi-hat and only use the overhead. Because sometimes the hi-hat can be quite a bit too loud. And uh, like with the uh, snare bottom drum microphone, we can find the overhead in here. Which is called the OH. stands for overhead. Go to edit, and here you can see all the drums that are bleeding into the overhead microphone. So if you don't want kick and snare in the overhead microphone, simply deselect those. And now when you have laid out all your different microphones here, you can always go in and shape the different sounds. So let's say we want a more punchy kick tone. 
solo the kick drum and then we go to FX and now this is only going to affect the kick drum let's uh, type in re EQ which is the built-in EQ in Reaper and now we can always boost this at around 60 Hertz and cut it around 300 Hertz and um, oops Give it a little boost at around 6000 Hz. Let's hear how that sounds. Sounds better. Let's try without the EQ. And then with. That's a bit more punchy. And the snare drum. Go into EQ. You can do all this while the track is running. Boost it around 200 hertz. You can always give it a little more click. And what I like to do is add some reverb. Reverb. And then it's important that you use the reverb bait, which is a lot easier to use than the reverb. Simply put the room size quite big, pull the wet signal down, gives it a bit more room. And this is by no means a final mixing, this is just to show you some of the possibilities. So let's hear how it sounds now. a lot better already. And finally let's do something about the overhead microphone. You can add some EQ. Actually high pass it around 600 Hz just to get rid of any unnecessary bass. Add some air, that means high frequencies. And finally apply a compressor. Recomp and let's just start the track again. This will make it sound a bit more even, but again, this is just a quick and dirty mix, nothing special. Let's hear the final product. a lot better than what we had in the beginning at least and now you can always go in and add some extra drums add some cymbals let's say that in the start we don't want the hi-hat we want cymbals and we want more kick drum beats let's listen to that and then it's just all up to you to just experiment, create your own beats, do your own mixing, and so on. Well, that's uh, about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, requests for other tutorials. See ya!